Hi, Al. So I'm going to be talking about Steve Ellis and his success as the founder of Chipotle. Okay, so first off, Steve was born in Indianapolis, Indiana on September 12, 1965, which makes him 49 years old. According to Steve's father, uh, when Steve was really little, his mom would have him sit on the counter and run the mixer, kind of just to keep Steve out of trouble and to teach him a little bit about cooking. He went to high school in Boulder, Colorado and attended the University of Colorado in Boulder. While in college, Steve was known for his elaborate meals and dinner parties. Steve was asked by a college friend what he was going to do when he graduated from college, and Steve really wasn't sure of that answer. His friend then suggested he go to cooking school. His father made him a deal saying, if you work a year doing anything related to restaurant work, waiting tables was good enough, and then tell me you really love the restaurant business, I'll pay to send you to culinary college. But I have one condition. It has to be the best culinary college in America. He then attended the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park, New York. After graduating from the Culinary Institute, Steve found a job as a sous chef under Jeremiah Tower at Star's Restaurant in San Francisco, California. While in San Francisco, Steve began to fall in love with taquerias, which is a massive foil-wrapped mission-style burrito. If you've never been to Chipotle, they're kind, they're kind of like um, Costa Vida or Cafe Rio burritos, just conveniently wrapped in foil. This is where Steve developed the idea for Chipotle. Steve's dad wasn't too excited about Chipotle or a burrito shop being opened by Steve after coming from the best culinary college in America. But Steve saw that these taquerias in San Francisco could be turned into a highly efficient production line type of restaurant. So for one of Steve's dinner parties that he hosted, he made the first Chipotle burrito, testing it out on his family and friends. Steve went to his parents and then asked for a loan to start the first Chipotle. Uh, he asked for about $75,000 and his father told him he had to write up a business plan. So in that business plan, Steve outlined exactly uh, what he had to sell and how much uh, daily expenses that he would have, and he had to sell 114 burritos to break even. The first Chipotle was opened July 13, 1993 on 1664 East Evans Avenue in Colorado. And uh, when the first Chipotle was open, people thought that it kind of looked like a Italian restaurant because it was red and green and just wasn't attractive whatsoever. One of the most interesting things about the first Chipotle was that there was no menu. So when the first customers would walk into the restaurant and see that there was no menu, they kind of just look around for a minute and end up leaving, thinking that there was no food for them that they would actually like. And so Steve would run out of the restaurant and catch the people and tell them to come look at the choices of food he had for them and that he would just buy their burrito if they would come and eat there. So one of Steve's kind of failures when he first opened the business was he hired a guy that wasn't very trustworthy, and he was the manager, and he just wasn't reliable. And one day, <laughs> the manager had disappeared and was gone with the safe. So it was kind of a good indicator that he wasn't a good guy. Chipotle did so well that they opened another store in Denver, and then they just kept growing. So the manager of Chipotle's second store decided that they would need to write down the recipes. And Steve's answer to that was, no, you don't ever go by a recipe, you taste things, and that's how you create things. So the manager of the second Chipotle, Selfridge, now the COO of Chipotle, would follow Steve around, catching the ingredients in his hands before they made it to the pots, then measure them out to figure out the recipe. Steve's real goal after opening Chipotle was to open a fine dining restaurant. And every time a new Chipotle would open, he would feel a little guilty that it wasn't his fine dining goals. Bob and Barbara Ellis funded the first few Chipotle stores, but they knew that with the amount of expansion that this was not going to last. So they went to their wealthy friends and raised $1.3 million. This was not going to be enough to support rapid, the rapid expansion, so they kept searching for investors. Steve reached out to Al Baldauchi, don't know how to say that one, now a director of Chipotle and an early investor. They sent the business plan to 13 venture capitalist type investors and were directed by all 13 of them. Al then had a close friend hired by McDonald's 
and this was the golden opportunity that Steve and Chipotle had been waiting for. Steve was asked to go to the board meeting for McDonald's in Illinois and prepare some Chipotle burritos and tacos. He prepared the meal, and it was a huge hit. Pat Flynn, the contact that Al had with McDonald's, now the, a director of Chipotle, got the other board members of McDonald's to agree to invest. McDonald's then invested $50 million in 1998 alone. McDonald's was the perfect fit for Chipotle because they were not expecting a certain amount of returns, like a venture capitalist would have. Not only did McDonald's invest in Chipotle, but they helped them learn how to run a larger chain, which was something that they were struggling with. Steve was very persistent to keep Chipotle how it began. McDonald's wanted Chipotle to do all sorts of different things, including drive throughs name changes, and breakfast. Steve quickly re rejected all of these ideas, and he wasn't very popular at the McDonald's headquarters because of this. Part of the McDonald's era included the franchising of eight Chipotle restaurants at the request of McDonald's, and it was not a good idea. They ended up having to buy out the franchises for a pretty large sum of money. The word fresh had always been a part of Chipotle's vocabulary, but Steve wanted to make it more than just fresh. McDonald's invited Steve to their chicken farm in Arkansas, and when he came back from it, he said it was absolutely disgusting. He had never seen anything worse. This is when Steve got involved with Nyman Farms, which is a small pig farm. McDonald's loved the idea through the PR side, but the cost of the food to the sale price made them wonder. This had huge potential to be a conflict between McDonald's and Chipotle. In 2006, McDonald's gave their, gave their shareholders the option to keep McDonald's shares or trade them in for Chipotle shares, which is called a split off. Chipotle had their initial offering after this, and on the road show, people would ask Steve who their customers were, and he would answer, with people who are hungry, you know, people who like to eat. They priced at $22 per share ended up opening, and ended up opening at $44 a share. After the IPO, everyone met for a big dinner, and halfway through the dinner, Steve and Bob disappeared. They had gone to a museum to look at art. Steve believes wholeheartedly in the way Steve believes wholeheartedly in the way Chipotle is run. He believes that it can be applied to any type of food. Tim Wilden, the brand director of Shop House Southeast Asian Kitchen, asked Steve if he could do a Southeast Asian restaurant, Chipotle style, and he said, "Let's do this." and they set up a trip to Bangkok and Singapore for a week, just eating like crazy. Now everyone wants to be the next Chipotle of something, which would include the simple production line and customization of food that doesn't slow the whole line down. They have broken the fast food rules and have done so with great food and a good leader. Because Steve stuck to his guns and didn't change for McDonald's, Chipotle has now over 1,800 stores and still has food with integrity.